So my favorite caiman species on the planet is probably the black caiman. And then after that, it's broad snout caiman because I've got Bruce and Bruce is such a beautiful species of caiman. Of course I'll come to South Africa. Before all this coronavirus craziness, Kevin and I were discussing how I need to go to Africa and go help out mambas out in the wild. Ziggy's gonna get a ridiculous enclosure. Everyone's gonna get a ridiculous enclosure simply because my animals need lots of space. I wanna give them lots of enrichment. A lot of people think that you can't give something like a, a snake enrichment. Yes, you can. What is going on, all you cool cats and kittens? Carol, Be I mean, Chandler's Wildlife here with Kevin the King Cobra. And I decided that today, why not take it easy, hang out with Kevin and do a Q&A. And basically, we've been waiting for three hours for you guys to message me on Instagram, send me those questions. All right, so Ruth is gonna start reading questions and I'll be answering them with Kevin. So start shooting over all those lovely questions and I'll be chilling here with Kevin the King Cobra. Yes, there are so many cool places out there that I wanna go visit. Peru, Brazil, Argentina. There are so many different spots to look for different species that are unique to those specific countries. So yes, I'm dying to go to places, for example, like Peru or Brazil. I'd love to do that. I'd love to see the Amazon, find wild anacondas, but most of all, find wild Bushmasters, the world's longest, largest species of pit viper on the planet. Hey Kevin, it's okay Kevin. The spade foot toad is probably the cutest toad on the planet. Found one in Australia. They're also found out in, in Western United States, out in the deserts. So they're a really cool frog. Also, uh, what's another one? There are so many cool frogs out there. Red-eyed tree frogs are insanely beautiful. Also the dendrobate family, which is the poison dart frogs, are some of the prettiest frogs on the planet. So I do love me some frogs, some amphibians. Uh, yes, I had two blue in Solaris. Sadly, both in Solaris have passed away and they are no longer with us. When you raise them up from a neonate, which is just a couple weeks old, they are extremely difficult to keep on food and it leads to uh, cyst feeding and eventually force feeding, which a lot of snakes can't handle. It's a lot of stress for them. So sadly, I don't have my in Solaris anymore and they had passed away. So hopefully in the future I'll get more in Solaris. I'll just have to get larger specimens that have been around for a little bit longer. So, I mean, in my, in my dreams, I would love to have something like a 10, 20 acre property, but the reality of it is to find a good home and a good size property, it's more so gonna be something like a five acre facility. But hopefully if I get lucky, it could be a 10 acre facility, but if not, get a five acre facility in the beginning so I can have my class one animals like crocodiles and other badass wildlife. And down the road, if I have to, I'll get another property. But for now, I'm aiming towards a five acre property with a nice house on it so I can build out my sanctuary. With Kevin, so many close calls. Honestly, when it comes to close calls with Kevin, uh, there's only been a couple situations where it was pretty hairy. It's all in how I, Put my energy out how i handle my animal as you can see right now i'm really calm with kevin he's not freaking out he's just cruising throughout my hands he's not trying to bite me he's not super defensive he's just huffing and puffing just a little bit so honestly if uh if he's in a bad mood or i've gone in on him on a day and it just wasn't feeling right most of the time i can call it and say you know what he's not in the mood to be handled or you know today's not the day to be doing it you got to rely on your gut instinct to keep yourself safe when working with animals like this. So yes, Kevin and I have had some very, very close calls. Isn't that right, Kevin? Huh? Isn't that right? We've had some very close calls, right? Huh? He's such a good boy. No, I'm not gonna teach random people how to handle venomous reptiles because they could put themselves in danger and endanger other people as well by losing their pets or just, you know, just endangering the people around you. You gotta know what you're doing. You have to keep these animals responsibly. And also, if you know how to take care of them, if you know what you're doing, there's nothing wrong with having these animals as personal pets. But at the same time, this is an animal that could put you in a coffin, deserves a lot of respect, and you should have the knowledge to take care of it properly so the animal doesn't have to suffer, let alone yourself, if you get bit. So my favorite caiman species on the planet is probably the black caiman. And then after that, it's broad snout caiman because I've got Bruce and Bruce is such a beautiful species of caiman. Broad snout caimans, 
They come in a couple different localities, and by localities, I mean like colors. Uh, King Cobra will be something more like an olive color, whereas somebody like Kevin is a Malaysian King Cobra, nice and blonde. So when it comes to broad snouts, some of them are ridiculously colored, and some of them are a bit more dull. Bruce is from a bloodline that's very beautiful and has almost like a leopard-like pattern, so it's pretty awesome. I love them a lot. Another kiss of death? Kevin. Good boy. Kevin could actually reach 18 feet long. And the thing about reptiles that makes them so cool, one of the many reasons I love reptiles, is even though they have a certain size limit to certain species, since they never stop growing, they have the potential to hit incredible lengths. So for example, a king cobra is only supposed to get upwards of 16, 18 feet long. That would be a monster. But who knows, maybe out there in the world, there is a 19 foot king cobra lurking somewhere around the Southeast Asian jungles, or maybe even in India. There's always potential for giants out there. Even when it comes to alligators, a lot of alligators typically only get around 12, 13 feet long for a bull gator. But then you have gators that have ended up being just over 14 feet long. So they never stop growing. And if they have the right food source, environment, and time, they can grow to be monsters. Ah, oh, Steve Irwin, hands down. The greatest naturalist that ever lived on our planet, the greatest presenter when it comes to wildlife, right up there with David Attenborough, Jeff Cor, and all these other people. I like the idea of Steve Rowan so much just because he grew up in a zoo setting. He didn't really go and get a degree or anything like that. He went through the roughest part of learning about animals, which is basically starting from the ground all the way up, working with cleaning poop, taking care of animals, getting down and dirty hands-on. And that's what I grew up doing here in South Florida. Kevin will get a girlfriend in the future. It's gonna have to be a Malaysian King Cobra. Yes, a Malaysian King Cobra. He's like, no, I want a Philippine girl. <laughs> no, so he's gonna potentially get a mate in the future. So we'll see what happens if one comes available, we'll get a big female Malaysian King Cobra and maybe they'll end up mating. So we'll see what happens. And then Justina will get her own mate in the future as well. Of course I'll come to South Africa. Before all this coronavirus craziness, Kevin and I were discussing how I need to go to Africa and go help out mambas out in the wild. I have a friend out there, uh, Bryce Bloom. He actually lives out in South Africa, friends with a lot of snake removalists and um, other people call them snake catches. Like in Australia, you call them a snake catcher. People that remove venomous reptiles from people's houses or potentially venomous reptiles that can't be identified. Kevin, relax. It's okay. I'm not gonna cheat on you, I swear. I'm just gonna go visit. Yes, he does see other snakes as food. So once in a while, when I take him out of the enclosure, he'll start investigating the glass, looking through it. And if he sees another snake, he'll lock eyes with it. And that snake, after that moment, begins to crap its pants. If it wore pants. It would wear a sock if it wore any pants, really, because snakes don't have legs. Yes, I love, I would love to go to the Philippines. I haven't been there yet, but they have Philippine King Cobras, they have Spitting Cobras, they've got crocodiles. I would love to go to the Philippines. It would be amazing. I've had Kevin for around two years now. And Kevin, if you want to know his age, he's probably around eight to 10 years old right now. For his size, that's the best guesstimate I can give you. Hell yeah, I can see myself working with Komodo dragons. I honestly think whether it's in a zoo setting or it's out in the wild, I don't know. I feel like I'm gonna end up seeing them in the wild before I end up seeing them in a zoo setting. Uh, but there are lots of people who work real hands-on with Komodo dragons here in zoos in the United States. And if I can get myself into one of those zoos and film a video, I would love to. I love Komodo dragons. They're one of my favorite monitor lizards on the planet. They're bad. Do I ever plan on measuring him? If I had to restrain him by the head and stress, stretch him out and actually get his length, I would need a good reason to do that because I don't care about his actual size that much to the point where I want to stress him out like that. So I'm guesstimating he's around 14, 15 feet long. We had him stretched out last night, not restraining him, just letting him crawl around the snake house. And it was ridiculous. I'm actually posting that photo online. And I actually, we'll put the photo right here. Bam, check that photo out. Look how monstrous he is. He is such a long King Cobra. 
I actually already do tours. I grew up doing tours growing up here in South Florida, doing uh, wildlife tours at different parks I worked at, doing little wildlife shows like alligator shows, snake shows. And currently, if I'm here at the Everglades Outpost and you're a fan of the show or you're just coming into the park and you wanna see the snakes, I am more than happy to walk you guys around and teach you guys about the animals we have in here. I love my reptiles. There's nothing more that I enjoy than walking somebody around and telling them about my reptiles, where they come from, what their names are, what they do, what they eat in the wild. It's fun for me, I enjoy it. Ziggy's gonna get a ridiculous enclosure. Everyone's gonna get a ridiculous enclosure simply because my animals need lots of space. I wanna give them lots of enrichment. A lot of people think that you can't give something like a, a snake enrichment. Yes, you can. So in the future, Ziggy's gonna end up getting a custom built pond maybe by Aquascape if they want to work with me. And it'll be a big, big, beautiful pond. He'll have natural sunlight and I'm going to have it real crystal clear so I can actually see where Ziggy's at at all times. Because my goal is to keep working with him as he grows. So when he's a big boy, I want to swim with him in the water. And we're actually going to start doing that soon, getting him used to being swam with me. So we're going to go to the pool where we have Casper the big alligator here at the Everglades Outpost and we're going to film an episode swimming with Ziggy. My background when it comes to education is I went to high school for two years. I dropped out, got my GED, went to college for, I don't know, six months for business. I didn't enjoy it. So what I ended up doing is going straight into firefighting because I come from a family of firefighters. And I thought the only career that I could work that I'd be happy that doesn't involve animals would have to be firefighting because it involves being somewhat of a social person, which I love being. It involves helping people, which I love. And just not the same thing over and over again. With firefighting, you're going on different calls. You never know what's going to happen next. It just gets crazier and crazier. But in between EMT and paramedic school, I was convinced to start a YouTube for my good friend, uh, Zach, and he actually got me on YouTube, gave me my first shout out. I took that shout out and I ran with it, started posting videos like crazy, and people started to really enjoy my wildlife. Right, Kevin? The lifespan of a King Cobra in the wild, let's start off with that, would probably be anywhere from 15 to 25 years. In captivity, a King Cobra, like a Malaysian King Cobra, has the potential to even live upwards to almost 30 years old in captivity. These larger snakes, like King Cobras, reticulated pythons, they live much longer than the smaller colubridae species, like rat snakes and king snakes. So, he has the potential to be an old man. His beautiful gold chevrons. He is the most beautiful king cobra I've ever seen in my life. And honestly, some of the most beautiful king cobras on the planet are like Chinese king cobras, but I think Kevin beats any Chinese king cobra any day of the week. Beautiful gold Malaysian king cobra, yellow all over his body, and then his chevrons, the bands, are like neon yellow from the sun. He's beautiful, he's an awesome animal. All right, so the name Kevin for, well, Kevin, my King Cobra, it simply came to mind when I unboxed him and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna name something very simple, very strong, and something that will take fear away from his name because this is a King Cobra. Everyone on the planet, when they see a King Cobra, they're like, holy crap, that's huge. Holy crap, it's venomous. Holy crap, it eats other snakes. It's a very intimidating animal. So I wanted to give him a name that made people feel comfortable about him, which make them love him at the end. And honestly, I think it's been working over the past year and a half, two years. People have grown to love King Cobras or let alone snakes in general. I have lots of people who comment and message me and they're constantly telling me how they're deathly afraid of snakes their whole entire life and now they love snakes and not just do they love snakes, they love the King Cobra, Kevin. I would love the power of Wolverine and I've thought about this a lot because I grew up a big Marvel nerd so I would love adamantium claws and the ability to regenerate so I can never get hurt. Or just to be like Deadpool. I would take being ugly and being able to regenerate from anything. I would just wear a mask all the time when I make videos. Kevin, say bye to the meatball clan. Say bye. All right, all you cool cats and kittens, Carol, I mean Chandler's Wildlife, <laughs> ending this video. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay gangster, and uh, wash your hands.
Uh, Kevin, Nick, and Cobra.